uh, you'll notice that um, Nicole Del Giorno, our organist, chose music um, from African-American composers and arrangers for this Juneteenth weekend. Please join me in the call to worship. God calls us together as a community listening to this moment. We incline our ears. God calls us together as a community listening to what matters. We are ready to listen. God calls us together as a community listening to what is true. We have come from Jacksonville to Sherman to hear the good news proclaimed. Together in this community, we will hear so much. God calls us together to listen again. Let us pray. <clears throat> Holy One, you incline your ear and listen to every joy and sorrow. Whisper and shout and sing your promise to us again, so that filled to the brim with your good news, we can share in your hope again and again. Amen. Let us sing.
Let us pray. Loving God, you call us to be disciples and proclaim the good news of your love and forgiveness. Yet often we are timid, uncertain, and afraid. Forgive us, God, and send us once again. Sometimes we hesitate to go, feeling that we are not good enough and need special gifts and training. Forgive us, God, and send us once again. Jesus told his disciples to travel lightly, yet we often carry emotional baggage and struggle under the weight of tired traditions and stale ideas. Forgive us, God, and send us once again. We can be afraid of rejection, and when we are rejected, we can be tempted to bury ourselves in self-pity. Forgive us, God, and send us once again. Jesus never told us that being a disciple would be easy. Help us, God, when we are afraid to take risks for your sake and the sake of the gospel. Forgive us, God, and send us once again. Hear this good news. Christ Jesus died to show God's unending love for us, even though we were sinners, to be assured that your sins are forgiven. As forgiven children of God, go and proclaim the good news. Thanks be to God. We are forgiven. We are forgiven. For whatever mistakes we've made, whatever messes we've created, for whatever choices we regret, we're forgiven. We get to start again, to build afresh to start anew. And because of that forgiveness, we know a sense of peace, which only comes from God. And that in and of itself is a gift to share. We hear and feel your peace in our hearts and souls and minds. And so we can be more open to hearing and receiving and understanding and being inspired by your word. So God, speak to us again, that we might follow more faithfully. Amen. This morning, our first scripture comes from Psalm 116. I love the Lord because God has heard my voice and my supplication because God has inclined his ear to me. Therefore, <clears throat> I will call on God as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all the bounty shown to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all the people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst of Jerusalem, praise the Lord. And the second reading from the ninth chapter of the gospel of Matthew into the beginning of the 10th chapter. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom 
curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother, Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother, John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12, Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take the end of the reading. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. This is one of, uh, this gospel is one of the scripture passages that I'm always a little bit nervous about preaching because the, um, the assignments for the disciples is a bit intimidating. Like I can imagine you're putting together the sign up list, you know, like coffee hour, uh, but including a list like cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lap- lepers and cast out demons. Okay, it's that or coffee hour, which do you prefer? Yeah, we're gonna fill up the rest of the summer really quickly, right? Yeah. There is this uh, authority, this responsibility that Jesus gives to the disciples that quite frankly, I don't know that we know how to make sense of. If someone came to our church today and said, okay, First Presbyterians, your job is to cure the sick, cleanse lepers, and raise the dead, I'm going to guess not many of us would sign up for that task. And yet there it is. And maybe, maybe the tasks for today are different. Maybe there are different chores for us in the 21st century. Maybe being disciples in the 21st century is enough different uh, that the specifics of that list aren't so helpful. Maybe it's more helpful for us to think a bit metaphorically about what it is that makes someone unclean in the 21st century. What is it? that is life-threatening in the 21st century? What is it that is lethal in the 21st century that we might protect folks from or situations that we might help them to leave? Even in the Psalm, hearing the voice of the Psalmist speak of the way God has loosed their bonds. Seems particularly appropriate on the weekend when we celebrate Juneteenth, our newest national holiday. National holiday. Um, On the off chance that some don't know the history of Juneteenth, there were people in Texas who had been enslaved And those who enslaved them didn't tell them about the Emancipation Proclamation. And they were isolated enough that they hadn't heard it from other people who had been enslaved. And so their freedom from enslavement 
came two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation. The good news came late, but it came. That's why you'll see people in Springfield wearing t-shirts that say free-ish. Because the Emancipation Proclamation took two and a half years to reach the last communities. And still today, people are only free-ish from the things that oppress. And the oppressions are real and they are many. And some of us feel them more keenly than others. There are all sorts of discriminations, biases, um, and quite frankly, overt hostilities that are directed at all sorts of people around us. But I listen to these scriptures and it sounds to me like what God intends for the people and for the disciples to fulfill is freedom and healing and wholeness and community. That too might be a tall order, maybe not as tall an order as raising the dead. How do you build community in the midst of polarization? How do you find healing for folks who can't access healthcare or who are forbidden from receiving healthcare that they need? How do we nurture wholeness in folks we don't speak with? Do those sound like the challenges of today? Do those sound, do those ring more true than uh, leprosy or resurrection from the dead? Are you still more willing to make coffee? <laughs> Making coffee still sounds easier, right? Humor helps when I'm feeling overwhelmed by the tasks of the day. Humor helps. I'll tell you two stories, both from this week. Uh, Thursday night, I was at the Illinois State Museum for the opening of the Noir Three exhibit, uh, a, an exhibition of all Black artists. Uh, it opens on Juneteenth weekend, and it's a project that was started by my friend Cinnamon, who um, died this last winter, along with uh, the Juneteenth Inc. folks, um, sorry, Cinnamon was the executive director of the library and she worked with the Juneteenth folks and other artists to make this happen in the last three years. And someone there um, who was there for the opening asked me about the folks who um, hang out and sleep on our steps at church. Um, and we had a little bit of conversation about the need for housing first, the people need safe places to be. Where do you go if you don't have a home? If one shelter has bed bugs and the other won't let you in, where do you go? What do you do? And what this person said to me was, yeah, those people on the steps are a problem. And I thought, the folks on the steps are our kin. They're our family. They're children of God who don't have what they need, which is why our congregation works with organizations like Helping Hands and the shelters and the food pantries and the Immigrant Action Network to try to feed people, to try to shelter people, to get folks off the street and out of shelters in and into permanent housing. 
because the people aren't the problem, but their circumstances are. And apparently, according to these scriptures this morning, we are called to free people from what oppresses, to build community and healing and wholeness. So the other thing that happened this week was um, the, the um, I'm going to get the name of it wrong, but the strategy team for the Heartland Housed Project, the city, the county, the service providers to try to provide that housing. They met in our lounge. Our chaplain, Tim Haworth, is on that team. <clears throat> and after the meeting, the director of Helping Hands sat down on the steps and did intake with a half a dozen folks that were sitting out here hoping for housing. This is what happens when we build community and we work together. That there's hope that the situation will change and those who have no safe place to be will find one. The fact that we have folks in town, religious leaders who have been saying hostile and hateful things about LGBT folks um, inspired us to reach out to other, other congregations to have a conversation about how we build safety, about how we present a faithful presence in this community that recognizes the gifts and graces of all people across all genders, across all sexualities, that we are children of God. I mention this now because you might see my name in a newspaper story. I was called uh, on Friday, Friday afternoon about um, addressing Bishop Paprocki's letter. I chose not to address the letter directly, but instead to say who we are and what we believe and how we live as a community of faith. Just so you know, the, my name may show up in the newspaper. And when we gather next week on Sunday, one of the main points is to build relationships with one another, to nurture safer places to let people know about the healing and wholeness that comes from recognizing we are all children of God and we are called into relationship with one another and we are blessed by those connections. Now it is true that Jesus is sending out the disciples just to the lost sheep of Israel and not to the Gentiles around. Paul's gonna pick that up in later years. How we end up here. It's part of our ancestry. It's part of the community building, one step at a time. My prayer is that for all the ways you may feel bound, this God who loves us is loosing your bonds so that you might loosen the bonds of others. That we may be free-ish but none of us are truly free until all of us are free. Thanks, Fannie Lou Hamer, and thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to sing.
That song comes to us from Cuba. So I'm thinking about our Cuban cousins this morning as well. Gratitude uh, for all that God does for us, for all the ways we are accompanied, by the ways that we are led by pillars of fire and cloud. We respond with gratitude. We share our joys and give our gifts and live our faith. We make our offerings through the mail and bank deposit, online giving and texting, and offering plates if you happen to be here. And we trust that God multiplies those gifts that all might have enough of a place, safe place to live, food, healing, community, love, and faith for all the ways that we are blessed. May we be blessings. Let us pray together. Oh God, you have created hope. Your love has been poured into our hearts so that we brim with hope for others. We brim with hope for the world. We share in the hope that we will not disappoint with our hands, our hearts, and every gift. And now, God, we come together and we pray this prayer that you taught us. You taught us to pray this together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go out into the world with eyes open to see the lost, with ears that hear the cry of the forlorn, and hearts filled with joy and strengthened by the love of God, ready to serve God's people and all creation. Amen. Amen. <laughs>